starts off in a really disturbing way. Dahil, uh, well, from opening scene up right until the duel scene, it was all of a sudden it was High School of the Dead. <laughs> so, well, basically, uh, the Sugetsu Trio, si Kakuto, and this yung dalawa niyang Alipores, they're basically escaping from all these zombies who turned up from nowhere <laughs> and just uh, turning their fellow employees into zombies. They they were trying to aim for the top floor wherein yung their own their, their only means of escape is right there. Yung parang uh, hovercraft na babagat na na usually tina transport yung mga Goha presidents. So that's their only means of escape. So akat sila from uh, from their closest allies down to their down to their well, down to their staff not zombies na eventually Gakoto is the only one left standing so by the time he is already there on the helipad siya na lang isa or so it seems sinundan siya ng mga zombies even Yuga has been turned into a zombie ngayon uh, yung puro dulo ng lahat ng to biglas, biglang lumitaw he calls himself the zombie king he challenges Gakoto to a duel Right. So, uh, medyo malakas yung zombie tech na ginagamit nito. Gakoto was in a bind. All of a sudden, he finally gets the resolve to um, end uh, gathers enough brain cells to beat the zombie king. And I gotta get some water. <laughs> After beating the zombie king, uh, everyone was turned into a zombie, even Yuga, suddenly is back to normal. <laughs> Yun pala, hindi pala niya nalalaman. He was, I, think, I guess he was so caught up with work that day, um, nakalimutan niya yung memo na na pass around, na pass all around the company na there will be a um, act like a zombie recreation time. So this lasts until 3 p.m. So nung pumunta ka ng 3 p.m., ayun in announce na sa PA system ng Goa. <laughs> eh, sinabi na lang ni Yuga, didn't you get the memo? May pinakita ni Yuga. Eh, nalum nalumugan si, si Kako to. Final scene. Let's just say that, um, well, Luke knows uh, that it is recreation time. So, sinasabi niya, Teka, uh, recreation time pa ba, Swirly? Ba tayo mo ko, ba tayo mo ko palabas yan? Kasi si Swirly, um, is trying to, kumaga, eh, what? I think Swordy is still uh, caught up in the acting stuff, so uh, gusto niyang, gusto niyang sugurin si Luke as a zombie. <laughs> Grabe. Wag na natin patagalin to, mga lifestyle Patreon. Let's break this down ARD style. Base. From the opening scene up until the dual scene, we start slow but excruciating. Kasi yung... You would really um, root for um, for the Sugetsus, for the Sugetsu trio to to really get the fuck out of there and um, and escape with their lives. It's it's typical of a zombie uh, of a zombie setting, whether it be anime or live action. Because well, siempre uh, there are there are because there are zombies na who are really who really want to. Uh, oh, who are really after your ass and talagang uh, no choice ka talaga kundi tumakbo na lang tumakbo okay here's how it works in the case of Yu-Gi-Oh if you lose to a dual zombie you turn into a zombie if you win if you uh, if you beat a dual zombie they'll just keep coming at you until you lose so either way maso zombie pa ka so, I love the pacing of uh, of this episode. Talagang uh, it had those zombie apocalypse feels to it. Pero binigyan ng Yu-Gi-Oh twist, okay? Binigyan ng twist only. Uh, well, the twist, the plot, well, the pacing twist only Yu-Gi-Oh can give. Ganon yan. And wow, I, I had that High School of the Dead feels again. <laughs> Grabe. Pero maganda nga eh. Maganda, maganda talaga yung uh, on how they on how they finished it off. 
So, no complaints about the pacing. Plot wise, first gear shift here was uh, oddly the opening scene. Kasi, pag pagbukas na pagbukas pa na ng episode, zombies na. But it is only right for the opening scene to, to, to trigger the episode. Now, um, Bridge made a, made a very good call here. Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift to. So, it sets off the atmosphere. Second gear shift was when the Zombie King challenged Kako to a duel. It's a no-brainer of a gear shift. Hello? Because right here, okay, so if you go back to the pacing, it was right at this moment, the pacing picked up. Kasi duel scene eh. Sevens is now into the habit of, um, uh, what you call this? Going into two commercial breaks. Dati isa lang eh. Ngayon, dalawa na sinem. Rightfully so. Kasi, it's now, well, to tell you frankly, it's now easier to, to gauge the gear shifts. Kasi, dalawa na ang commercial break niya. Uh, that's, a, that's a power tip for you, mga kalaista. If you want to, uh, if you want to know how to discern gear shifts. So, again, it's a no-brainer of a gear shift. Because, someone challenged for a duel. Final gear shift. Was, was when Gakuto uh, beat the zombie king. Dito kasi nagsimula yung comic relief, okay? After uh, after a tense two thirds, who would ever think that um, that a um, a dual zombie episode would um, would would end this way? Kaya ako tinawag na gear shift. Kasi, bigla bigla, oy nagtatawa na na, inyo pala. So, it is through this gear shift that Gakoto realized that he's been too caught up with work lately. Kaya, yung, uh, yung, mga, yung mga recreation time policies ng mga, ng, uh, ng company, hindi na niya napansin. But he does know that it is important that these uh, recreation times are important. Because um, he's fully aware that he's in a toxic work environment. Kaya merong ganito para oh, stop being a zombie for a while and uh, become a person again. Parang ganon yun. So it's also uh, this gearship will also make you realize that. It's also important in real life to have fun, especially if you're uh, if you're in a toxic work environment. These three gear shifts that I saw, um, probably the third will um, will uh, play a role down the line in season two. So plot wise, malinis. Ang ganda ng continuity ng, ng episode na to. Talagang, you would be so caught up in um, on how the episode story is being told. Ganon dapat. Okay? So, it's now, oh, now is this episode is not the type of episode that you would that you would have a heart to uh, to put in at least one side story. I really had those high school of the dead feels during the first um, during the first two thirds of the episode. The plot made me um, made me stick to to the storyline of the episode. Uh, it really did its job. So pace, flow, and plot. I almost did not distinguish the uh, the flow from the plot. Uh, the plot twists in this episode were were so fluid. Eh, you would you you would actually be caught up in the story of the episode and not um, discern which scene is a gear shift. All right, so it can, it can cause a dilemma if you're an anime critic like me. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode seventy-four. Easy <laughs> Oh. Now I'm not going to uh I'm not going to uh, 
talk that long because uh, we really need to get the groceries out. <laughs> Kumain ako ng breakfast ngayon dito sa... Chow Kee Pasita. So, well, let's just expect another great episode from Sevens. Kasi, yeah, I think the wrong word. Kasi back-to-back episodes ng two thumbs up on Sevens. So. And we should get right back to um, to the issue of whether Yuga is actually a Goha. Ito, kung, is, kung siya talaga yung nawawal ng uh, President Sibling. So, we, we gotta get back into that. Yan lang, uh, it made the, the overall storyline of Sevens more exciting. Because it now involves the main protag. So, again, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens, episode 74. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Hooray for the fan service moments. So what do we do now, Patreon? Mga kalaistan? Simple lang. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Can't wait. In the meantime, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And in the meantime, YouTube, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Continue me where we left off. Stand off. And, um... Lame introductions time. Then, Pino suddenly activates both shards. All hell breaks loose. Now, the two brains, si Oliver at saka si um, Ryunosuke, they're trying to find a way on how to uh, how to override these things. While they were at it, hinabol ni Botan si Pino at si Elmo, the agents of a small house, who clarified they are actually named Una Casita. So we're going to use that. She was almost there twice in um, uh, in getting the shards back, but Pino and Elmo uh, always managed to um, to to get themselves out of out of her hair. Sinamana ni Kuruma si Botan in uh, in one of the uh, one of the light boats na katulad na katulad na ginamit ng mga na mga unang kasita. So habol habol din na CIA. Botan was finally able to um to board Una Casita's life raft. She was able to get both shards. Pero nabitawan ni Botan si Elmo na kakuha. Kasi naitali niya pala ni Botan si Pino. Talaga na subdue niya. But binili na lang ni Pino kay Elmo na to carry on the mission. Technically mission accomplished dahil may mga dumating na helicopter. Uh, at assault drones ang una kasita to rescue them. Pino suddenly breaks free from 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 Botan's ties. He hostages Botan and makes her choose: hey, save yourself or um, or basically we both die. Kasi tatama na sa mga bato batong baybayin ng ano yung, yung lifeboat nila. Botan did the unthinkable here. Yung uh, meron pa siya natitirang tali nun, i-binalot niya kay Pino on, on his, uh, his trigger arm. The arm that, um, that is holding the gun. Ginano niya at hindi na ni Pino nilodge na pala yung angka nun dun sa isang uh, parang lagayan ng, lagayan ng saguan or um, a slot for the oars. Dun, dun yan ni Lodge. So, well, walang taka si Pino. He dies. Final scene. Um, Kuruma, uh, of course, uh, being um, the close ally that he is. <laughs> so, eh, kinukort na lang si Botan. Say, uh, are you okay? The CIA agents are in obvious shock as to what Botan did to to that agent of Una Casita. And of course, yung kasama niyang Yung kasanggan niya itong si, si Elmo, he saw it all. Excuse me. So, let's break this down ARD style. Pace. For a little while, during that exchange of absolutely lame introductions, um, natatawa na nga lang ako sa lameness eh. The pacing slowed down. Then, it took X the moment it ended. <laughs> Through the pacing, we just saw that Botan inadvertently made her first kill. 
ever. Well, Pino said it best. You can't. You, you took on this job without being prepared to die. I guess that um, that set something off in Botan. Just goes to show you, again by the pacing, that in the spy business, death is the norm. That is one of the norms, actually. Flo naman. First gear shift here was when Botan tried to attack Elmo Pero, hindi yun ang tunay niyang pakay. Her true goal was to track both of them down. I think all of you know why I called it a gear shift. Kasi, we've seen another side of Botan that, um, that's been revealed for the first time. This gear shift is also telling us that wag nating lalang langin ang kikay na to. <laughs> oh, second gear shift was, oh, that, um, what you call this? The fight between Botan and Pino. I'd be an idiot if I did not call this uh, this scene a gear shift. Kasi character development ito para kay Botan. If you would if you would look at it real closely, Pino challenged Botan's moral compass here. Nasubukan ang abilities and yeah. Yung konsyensya rin ni Botan dito as a spy. Final gear shift was when, uh, yeah, during the final scene, nung, uh, kina, nung kinokonsol na ni Kuruma si Botan for what she just did. And, well, the CIA just looked on in, in utter disbelief. <laughs> this gear shift will also um, tell you how much um, how much closer Kuruma and Botan became as teammates? Kasi ngayon talagang we can now say na buo na ang ang tiwala ni Kuruma sa mga abilities ni Botan. And right now he he just realized that um, uh, his strongest teammate right now has just killed someone. So uh it was the right thing to do, to um, to assure at least her conscience that it was the right thing to do, because well, bottom line, Pino had a death wish, at gusto pang mandamay. You can also see it as a character development gear shift for Kuruma, kasi si sila Ryunosuke at Kiyohei talagang malaki na tiwala nila kay Botan, but simulat sa pool pa lang. Uh, he has trust issues with her, but in this particular incident on uh, on the Asclepius, and kapos ngayon nga naapatay si Botan. So, I, yeah, I think it was it was the right thing for him to do to to at least console um, console his teammate that um hey, it was either you or him. Uh, what choice do you have? So these three gear shifts that I saw, yeah, they will all play a role in the second half of this anime's run. Episode 7, Tesla Note is a 13 episode run, mga lifestyle. We were already at the halfway point right here, so... You can see it's the most pivotal episode in the anime? Probably. Pero, plot-wise, Malinis. It is totally uh, uncalled for. Okay? If you're, uh, uh, if you've been watching animes as long as I have, it is totally uncalled for for an animation studio to put a side story or even a backstory, no matter how long it is, with this tense of an episode. Crucial ang mga events sa episode na to. Because it is the first time that uh, either Japan Safety or the CIA has um, has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Una Kasita. Talagang uh, talagang giliang umaatikabo yun ang nangyari dito sa episode na to. 
So no complaints about the plot. It was it was a clean one. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. Giving us probably the most action-packed episode of this anime so far. So, Tesla Note Episode 7. I wouldn't want to be in Botan shoes right now. Because, consider nyo, okay? She's only 18. She's probably the youngest spy out there. And she makes her first kill. Although accidentally. Uh, technically, no. Bottom line, it is still her first kill. Just goes to show you that in the world of uh, espionage, death is one of the norms. Next to betrayal, of course. <laughs> so again, Tesla Note Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime mock lifestyle. Don't worry about that. You did the right thing. So what are we gonna do, mga lifestyle Patreon? Well, no brainer. The drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. I really can't wait the aftermath of uh, of, of this. But they, both the CIA and Japan safety, their hands are empty right now. And that's another two shards for Unakasita because um, Pino revealed in this episode that they have been. Collecting the shards um, way before the CIA or Japan safety um, got wind of it. So we can now safely assume that um, Una Asita is at least five steps ahead of either one of them. Yeah, they got a lot of catching up to do, both of them. So, in the meantime, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And, well, if you're exclusive to the ERD, sorry ka na lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest na lang. Another three stories. So, first story was um, what was actually teasered from... Uh, the last episode. They were after this vampire named Mr. Lude Talk. Once he hits you with this hip hypnotic cane of his, you will start saying lewd things. Although, uh, although you didn't mean it. Una yung tinamaan nito, si Ronaldo. Then, si Hinaichi. Then, uh, nagsunod-sunod na. Nearly everybody in Shin Yokohama has it. Uh, Nag-aapo rang hanapin si... Nagapurang hanapin siya nila, nila Dralok, Hinaichi, at ni, of course, ni Ronaldo. Then, of course, yung, uh, yung mga ibang vampire hunters sumali na. Then, eventually, Dralok came up with a plan. Hmm. Sige. Kinuntya pa niya si Odd Creature. So, si Odd Creature ang nakahanap kay, kay, kay Mr. Ludtok. His powers do not work on odd creature. Uh, nagtagisan ang dalawa. But eventually, they found a um, kindred spirit. Ugh. So, sinabi ni Dralok, it's me who's the one that's sorry. So, may backup plan pala si Dralok. Okay. Eto na. Um, all the vampire hunters and uh, probably some citizens, even the kids, na na well, sort of a parang kaalyado ni, ni Ronaldo Dralo. Yung pala, he, Dralo used odd creature as a distraction to Mr. Luto. Before they know, before both of them know it, ayun, pinaligiran na sila, and on Dralo's signal, kinuyog sila pareho. <laughs> so let's break this down ARD style. Base. Do I need to say anything about the pacing of this episode? Eh, it's comedy from start to finish eh. So, I got no complaints. So, I don't need to expound on it except for... Um, 
the third story. Medyo nag-tone down ang pacing kasi dumalo yung may dumalo na kamag-anak si Dralo. Medyo nag ano. Then the pace uh, the pace pick up again nung uh, tao dito nung naiinis na si Ronaldo kay Draws. Because ang ingay-ingay hindi siya makapag-concentrate sa pagsulat niya. Overall mga ka-lifestyle Patreon I have no complaints when it, when it came to the pacing of this episode. Talagang pang comedy yung pacing. <laughs> Flo naman! Well, I think the biggest gear shift of this entire episode of, uh, is the time when Drauz decided to, um, to to leave Shin Yokohama and not see his son. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, no brainer. Kasi, agad na naintindihan ni Drauz kung ano ang kalagayan ni Dralog dito sa town na to in, in Shin Yokohama. Kasi di, di nga nila mahanap ni Ronaldo kung nasaan. So, uh, well, he knows that Dralog is now an adult. So, yeah, he should have a good time. Kasi, eh, ang pamilya pala na eh, ultra yaman eh. So, they got all the money in the world for even... Uh, Dralok has all the money in the world to do this. Dralok uh, realized that, well, Dralok has found a uh, a human he, a human uh, he can trust. Ayun nga, si Ronaldo. So, sinabi lang niya kay Ronaldo, he's found uh, a good human in you, so to speak. If there's anything this gearship will tell you is how is how ruthless Ronaldo is against vampires whether it be, whether it be good or bad <laughs> right talagang he really shows his uh, emotions in front of vampires talagang if he wants to suck them in the face he will suck them in the face if he wants to cut their head off they will he will cut his head he will cut their heads off parang ganun lang yan eh. kaya well maybe force of habit kasi eh, madalas yung gawin to kay Dralok eh Drauz has seen everything um, about Dralok's current lifestyle from Ronaldo. So, kaya siguro, hmm, nag-enjoy ang anak ko rito. Alright, I, I don't need to visit them anymore. Paris na nga siya, biglang dumating yung tatlong bata. At, <laughs> I mean, siguro, Dralok, ano ba yan? <laughs> I, to him, it's, ano eh, it's too much indulgence for to the kids. Oh, maga. Nagmalagay si Dralok? I don't know. <laughs> but it was a funny. So, this gearship that I saw, this one and only gearship that I saw, Maka Lifestyle, um, more likely will play a role in the second half of this anime's run. But don't get me wrong. Although, this is the only scene I saw as a gearship here. It's a really great episode. Talaga natawa na naman ako. Plot wise. Branchado. Mm. Because the way they transition from the first to um to the second story medyo seamless. Kasi uh yung aftermath ng first story Namimili si Ronaldo sa, sa convenience store ng kanilang kakilala. Then these three kids uh, told him that, um, oh, oh, it's Mr. Boobs back. <laughs> so, then, um, biglang nag-switch dun sa second story. Hindi naman biglaan eh. Kumbaga, you can safely assume that, um, Honda starting out his day happened the same time Ronaldo was shopping for necessities. Eh, kasi, parang the day after eh, nangyari. Yung story ni, uh, ni, yung story ni Honda, yung second story, parang kinabukasan ng nangyari. So, maganda yung transition ng first at second stories. So, I can easily now, I can now say to you guys that it's a well-ironed out plot. Just because of that. So, pace, flow, and plot, 
they all came together for this episode. Talagang, you can easily tell the gear shifts, the pacing, and uh, of course, the uh, the well ironed out plot of this episode. Galing talaga ng madhouse. <laughs> so, The Vampire Dies in No Time, episode 7. Hmm. Deserve talaga. Two thumbs up. Excuse me. So, I'm going to expect um, uh, nothing less from uh, from this anime but another uh, another set of stories next week. But you could see now the um, the progression of, of the two main protags. Kumbaga, although Ronaldo sees um, his relationship with Dralok as a uh, profitable one, lucrative one, Dralok's family sees it at a whole new level. Kasi, natuwa naman sila nagkaroon ng ganitong kaibigan si Dralok na not only protects him, but helps him uh, what's you call this? Well, kumbaga, nagkaroon ng value ang buhay ni Dralok when Ronaldo came in. Dahil Dralok now gets to assist Ronaldo in uh, in in taking out the bad vampires. Pero talaga, pero talaga, like yun yan, si Mr. Lutok. Although, their, as in the case of Mr. Lutok, their methods are, yeah, really disturbing, really bizarre. Bago nila kakatin yung biktima nila. Yeah, yeah, you'll need a vampire hunter friend like Ronaldo to take these people out. So, in, on his own, hindi kaya ni Dralo. Whether we like it or not. Kaya, this episode, especially the third story, will show you how appreciative Dralok's family is to Ronaldo. And, well, if I were Ronaldo, I would see it this way na. Kasi, hello? Dralok comes from a rich and powerful vampire family. Eh, halos lahat ng mga kaanak ni Dralok Putang ina, Vampire Lord level to eh. Yung, yung lolo niya si Progenitor, God tier na vampire. Halata. The way he acts, the way he talks, you do not want to piss off this kind of a vampire. So if I were Ronaldo, I would no longer see Dralok as a, uh, as a cash cow. I would see this as leverage. Dahil, botong-boto sa'yo, pamilya ng... ng ng vampire na to. If you need, if you need, um, if you need help, like in, um, uh, apocalypse kind of help, sigurado, tutulong ang mga to sa'yo. They will even provide information as to the whereabouts of this kind of a vampire, as to, well, as to how, uh, this particular vampire does business, so to speak. All Dralok wants is a friend. So, you gotta, you gotta treat him better, Ronaldo. Tip ko lang. So again, The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this wow, zany anime manga lifestyle. Vampires have hearts, you know. So what do we do now, mga lifestyle, Patreon? Of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next set of stories. Parang ayaw ko na sabihin na episode kasi multi-story episode eh. But, if you're on Patreon, just wait for my next upload. If you're exclusively on YouTube, well, what can I do? Enjoy the reviews on this digest. started the episode off with uh well basically higher ups have been uh, have given the ghost signal to assassinate Elsie so in inform na nila si Vera and of course 
in Inferno Manifera si Leslie so the whole team now knows that it is going down plan is going smoothly so far until Hayden suddenly shows up from out of the blue he disables Larry then well uh, the moment uh, he um, he sees Leslie again well, the fight is on and it was one hell of a fight scene Hayden is um where he wants to uh, to kill Leslie so Leslie is now busy she uh, he couldn't give the order to uh, to uh, to to shoot uh, Elsie to Shigure so he's having a well I'm all tied up here it's up to you guys now to complete the mission so yeah nga well hindi naman si well si Kobato at si Larry hindi rin makalapit kay Elsie kasi ang daming naka nakapaligid na tao eh may dala pala silang ano yung, yung natilang fireworks from the uh, from the welcome party ginamit nila so yun fireworks pero may narinig na putok ng baril galing pala yun sa sa baril ni Shigure instead of um, shooting Elsie nakita niya kasi that uh, his XO is in trouble kasi nga uh, na corner na ni Hayden he shoots Hayden's arm off as the episode went on Leslie already figured out that well may naglaglag sa kanila at nireport na niya kagad kay kila kila Vera at uh, 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 sino ba to? kasi naalerto na eh yung village they have this huge this huge robot chasing after uh, Kobato Larry and Sigure Leslie uh, what you call this uh, created a diversion for that um, for that huge robot so Shang Hinabul he found a way to, uh, to completely neutralize this huge robot when all of a sudden from uh, from a great distance someone shot his uh, his vibe si Hayden pala the final scene was well huling huling habili na niya sa kanyang uh, sa kanyang mga tao take care of Vera for me yup a lead character just died in this anime mga lifestyle Patreon he's quite a colorful character and um blame Hayden for it so let's break this down ARD style I really wanna I really wanna get into the groove of things when it comes to this episode pace moments before the final half of the episode the te uh, the, the pacing picked up you'll be hanging to the edge of your seats as to uh, what's going to basically what's going to happen to these guys so their XO is now presumed dead so who's going to give the orders now the pacing will make you realize that and of course well hindi naman makikilam si Hayden kung hindi niya alam kung ano kung ano ang uh, plano ng Vera Baton kung hindi sinabi sa kanya tanggap na ni Shigure that um he's the one who's going to uh, put a bullet in Elsie's head he was uh, he almost accomplished his mission kasi yo his uh, LC said is now in his sights tapos at the same time um, his XO needs help the pacing will also make you feel his dilemma kasi ano, ano ba talaga uunahin niya ang mission o ang uh, buhay ng mentor niya and his commander his, his direct commander so he well if you've seen the episode already you know what his choice was if there's another thing this uh, the pacing of this episode will tell you it's this there will be hell to pay hey then there's gonna be hell to pay for you first gear shift was when they were able to uh find a safe place to um to to uh serve as their uh what you call this as their command center uh, why did i call this gear shift? simply lang because in that scene kinausap ng solo ni leslie si Shigure 
may binigay uh, may binigay si Leslie kay siguro na note which comes directly from Vera we still don't know what the what the contents of that note is kasi mukhang hindi ba nababasa ni Sigure something uh, some degree of uh, telling Sigure that this may be his last mission this Kirshifo also uh, show us how much of a leader Leslie is he uh, would go this far to micromanage his people in a sure ng XO na well Sigure is Sigure's head is in this mission and uh, yeah but uh, Leslie got disappointed in Sigure a bit kasi in his own words he screwed up kasi inuna inuna kasi ni ni Sigure ang kaligtasan ni ang kaligtasan niya rather than uh, rather than the the business at hand which is assassinating Elsie I guess Sigure still has that moral compass typical of a main protag that's what uh, that's another thing this gear ship will tell you second gear shift was well uh, Hayden suddenly throws a monkey wrench in their plans. Well, why did I call it a ship? <laughs> Simply lang, it was two episodes in the making. Another thing why I called this a gear ship is because, well, <sighs> it's the biggest plot twist of this episode. I never thought uh, uh, Hayden would be a. Uh, be a factor in this uh in this anime akala ko ano lang yun siguro baka baka goons lang ito eh but he then proved that otherwise he uh, he's a force to be reckoned with in this anime talagang uh right now he's uh standing in as the main antagonist of this of this anime talagang he fulfilled this role he showed us in this gear shift final gear shift was well Leslie made the ultimate sacrifice and and um, and it wasn't his choice but why did I call this a gear shift but simply lang it's probably the most crucial gear shift of this anime it's a really crucial gear shift if not for uh well let me declare it right now patreon mga lifestyle this gear shift is so crucial it is going to dictate the second half of this uh this anime's run so these three gear shifts that i saw automatic the final gear shift will play a role in the second half of this anime's run because 12 episodes lang ang deep insanity as announced Otherwise, Malinis. Need I say more? <laughs> the plot was so clean, it will make you realize that it would be a success if the fair platoon have, hadn't been ratted out. Kung wala nung si Hayden, sigurado, naging successful ang mission nila. Alay, talagang... Uh, you can call it a sad ending. The plot will make you uh, feel the sadness dial lead character CNA. Eh? See Leslie. He's the he's the XO of the Vera Platoon. And for him to go out this way. Uh, the plot will also make you realize that there's hell to pay for Hayden. And what well, Let's just say that Shigure, uh, what you call this, give him a sample of, of what that hell is going to look like. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, giving us uh, another uh, another episode 6, capping off with a, a lead character death, but uh, overall, it's one of the best episode sixes I have seen this anime season. So, Demon Sanity, The Lost Child, 
episode 6. And the way he, the way he leads his team, talagang on mission. Lalaking lalaki siya, but off missions, yeah, he's mas what you call this? Mas idol pang asang pumor makisa kisu mirip insan. Alright, but if that is the last time we're going to see Leslie. Yeah, well, I can say that yeah, he will be missed. I'm gonna miss his um, I'm gonna miss his leadership, the way he um, the way he nurtured uh, Shigure. Excuse me. Just goes to show you that um, in the pocket um. Member ka ng LGBTQIA plus community, eh, hanggang hanggang fashion designer ka lang, hanggang cosplayer ka lang, hanggang hanggang simping empleyado ka lang. But here, you gotta take your if you're member of that a member of that community, you can take your lessons from this character, from Deep Insanity, and his name is Leslie. He's gonna be missed. Kaya, we're now done with the first half of its run. So, <laughs> I hate to say it, but what a way to cap off the first half of your run with a lead character death. <laughs> I've seen this before many times and the effect is the same. It is tough to watch. So again, Deep Insanity, The Lost Child, Episode 6. This is about it. Leslie deserves another mic drop. So what's next for us, mga lifestyle Patreon? We do the drill. SOP na yun, di ba? We will wait for next week and watch that episode. If you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. But otherwise, enjoy the reviews in this digest. Well, uh, episode starts when Ma has been uh, adopted officially by uh, Balor family. Elig found a way to uh, to to bring moisturizer into this world. Yes, folks. So, ang proposal niya ngayon sa sa foster father niya ay cosmetics. Pero hindi siya magigipo kompetensya sa mga sa mga current brands of cosmetics niyon. Nope. It's actually something to enhance cosmetics, which is moisturizer. So, it's a combination of water, oil, and lecithin. Lecithin comes from soybeans. There's an abundance of soybeans in Tuwata Day. Pinagtatanong na siya kung how long is it going to take to mass produce this thing? Sabi niya, isang buwan. Kasi we need to get the lecithin from Tuwata Day. Tapos, inano rin niya na there will be competitors, there will be spice. Tama yung sinabi niya. Kasi, one night, someone tried to uh, to kidnap Ilig. Pero, Tart and Ma were on the job. Na, well, uh, they were able to catch this spy. And, whoa! Pinurture nila ng gusto. I feel sorry for the spy. But anyway, 
um, everything was going well. Six months later, pumutok ang ang Orna. It's the uh, it's the brand it's the brand name of the moisturizer Ilig uh, created. So, talagang pinagpilahan sila. Everything's going well. Then, uh, I think the time came when Ilig or Lou in real life um, does this once a month visit to an old friend. Eh, ginagawa niya pala nito ever since he I think he came to Mill 2. So, medyo sanay na sila tart at uh, maha na wala si Ilig at least once a month. The person he visits once a month is Dia. Dia was able to share uh, new spells with Ilig. Uh, na, teka, wag mo na Ilig. Kasi si Dia ang kausap niya eh. Luna lang. Yan. They were able to um to to formulate or uh, to create an anti-gravity spell while Lou was spending his day that day with Dia uh, Maha and Tart were yeah we're get, really getting along kasi they were um, cooking their own meals and they're eating together yeah wow okay so they're they're really getting along very well then final scene one morning nabutan siyang natutulog nila Maha at Tart kasi kasi usually magkakatabi sila sa isang kama <laughs> napansin nila na ang himpig ng tulog ni Ilig so nagising naramdaman niya tapos may naamoy na kakaiba yung dalawa and so naalala na lang ni Ilig na tinanggal niya yung kamang ganun nakita niya He just realized he had a wet dream. <laughs> Ang suggestion agad ni Tart. Uh, teka, I'm your personal servant. I should be doing that also. <laughs> Tapos sabi naman ni Maha, sinigunda naman si Tart. Eh, kunwari ka pa, kapatid mo ko, eh pwede, magunta, pwede naman maging tayo eh. <laughs> Congratulations, Ilig. Binatang binata ka na. <laughs> so let's break this down ARD style. Pace. Well, it is um the only time the pace picked up was during the torture scene and the final scene. But most of the time it's um it's rather slow kasi well 19th yan ko ang uh, ang call ng ng Silver Link and Studio Palette here because they really want to uh, to show the audience how how Illig is progressing as a businessman the tense pacing of the torture scene yeah that was tense wow it was really disturbing kasi he, well Illig has already taught Maha the art of torture and assassination in such a short time. So, gets na gets na ni Maha kung ano ang gustong mangyari ni Illig pag merong, meron sila mga ganitong bisita. Siyempre, gets na gets din ni Tart. And without a second thought, they knew how to how to neutralize this, this intruder. And uh, the final scene, yeah, that was a really funny moment kasi well the the pacing will also tell you na nagbibinata na si Ili yeah <laughs> I absolutely have no complaints about this about the pacing of this episode I'm actually flabbergasted by it <laughs> flow naman well first gear ship here was when um was during uh yeah was Ilig's business pitch to to the head of the Balor family. Why do they call this a gear ship? Because we get to see here how um, how Ilig uh, progressed as a businessman. How Ilig started off as a businessman. So talagang si Goro from his previous assassination jobs in his former life he took on the role of um CEO or a banker or even a 
or even a home based businessman or even a network marketer who knows talagang nakita mo yung character development ni Ilig dito well he's he's not just an assassin or a doctor right now he's now also an entrepreneur second gear shift was when yeah you guessed it the torture scene why did I call this a gear shift? it's a no brainer of a gear shift mga lifestyle patreon we now see how much of a team um, Illy has assembled in uh, in the shadows you we now see how effective uh, Maha and Tart are when it comes to torture Mukhang marami silang natutunan kay Lu when it comes to that yeah Illy really wants to know who final gear shift was yep you guessed it again the final scene this is probably the funniest character development moment i've seen so far this anime season <laughs> kasi true to life true to life yun ang yari dito despite his um his being a, a child prodigy and uh, a skilled assassin doctor and now entrepreneur Ilig Balor or Lu Tuata De in real life is still a boy but now yep he just had his first wet dream congratulations you're slowly becoming a man <laughs> so these three gear shifts that I saw all of them will play a role down the line in the second half of this anime's run then Daniel we're now in the second half of this anime's run but wise Malinis. Pero, I got one complaint. Bakit sila nagsingit ng ganun side story ni, ano, ni, ni Ahem? I mean, wow, that was a lame side story. <laughs> Mabuti na lang. Malakas yung dating ng main continuity ng episode sa akin. So, um, I can let that slide. But, but overall, the plot was really clean. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. <laughs> Grabe. Grabe yung eksena lang yun. Talaga natawa ako. So, Ansatsu Kisoko, episode 7. Let me relax a bit. Uh, the final scene will complicate things for uh, for Lou because you know, it's it's part of uh, it's part of growing up right <laughs> he's been through that okay he was uh, he was probably in his late 50s when uh, when he was killed in the pilot so yeah napagdaanan na yun sigurado and uh, he's going through this process all over again <laughs> That's what you get for for being easy kind. <laughs> so I'm gonna expect uh, greater things from from this anime because of uh, the things that happened in this episode, especially the final scene. <laughs> More of that, please, Silverlink. So uh, I'm gonna be looking forward to a great second half for this anime. So again. On Satsuki Soko, episode 7. That final scene deserves another mic drop. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, Mama Lifestyle. Congrats, Ilig. Lalaking lalaki ka na talaga. So, what's next for us, Mama Lifestyle Patreon? The drill, of course. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Hopefully, merong uh, meron ding uh, growing pains related na scene dun. <laughs> Looking forward na ako talaga. Eh. So, 
Evaluate Patreon for my next upload and well, makisabay na kayo sa mga uh, exclusively YouTube audience ko yan yung mga ka-lifestyle. Enjoy the other views in this digest, all of you. First and second story, well, uh, halata namang two-part story, eh. shows um, Komi uh, going out with uh, Najimi and Tadano and Agari to this public pool. Then, of course, in her usual stalker self, Yamai tags along. Well, uh, she didn't tag along alone. Nag-imbita pa siya ng mga kasama niya. Alright, so, pinakilala niya sa, sa iba. And, well, according to Komi, it's okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Everyone was having fun, pero si, um, si Komi medyo apprehensive uh, as to... Um, all the rides in that, uh, in that, pu- uh, hindi naman sa public pool exactly, it's a water park. Lahat ng rides na sinubukan ng, ng grupo, and medyo apprehensive siya. And, lalo na yung ano eh, yung, 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 yung malaking water slide. Yung iba, uh, nagjajakin po eh, kung sino ang, ang, ang unang sasakay kasama si Komi. Wop! Nasilat silang lahat ni Tadano. While uh, he and Komi were riding this slide, he sort of developed this fetish for long hair. Uh, of course, Komi in her um, uh, in her own way, sinabi niya kay Tadano that she had fun. And as a, res- as a result, um, she tried that slide nine more times. Okay? Nine more times! Itong si... Tawag ito. Si Najimi. Uh, si... 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 Well... Uh, well... I just found out that Najimi is actually bisexual. Organically, she's a he. Inaya niya yung dalawa, si Tadano at si Komi. Kasi eh, nagpapahingin rin. Nagpapahingin yung dalawa eh. Sinabi na niya kay Komi, o sige, mauna na ako sa inyo. Eh, biglang sumama si Komi, biglang nadapa. So, um, Naji, uh, hindi, um, Tadano wasn't able to, to save her from, from getting, from trip, from tripping. So, as a result, tinak mo siya sa infirmary, ayun, may, may band eight na yung tuhod niya. Later on, ayun, uh, medyo, Komi was feeling down dahil, hindi siya maka hindi siya makasabay ngayon dahil nga may sugat. Bawal talaga. Sinabi naman ni Tadano na it's okay. Pero sinulat niya doon sa ano eh, sa 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 parang notebook niya. I trip and I um, I made everyone worry in the process. Bottom line, in explain lang ni Tadano that it's an accident. She doesn't have to um, she doesn't have to think that way. Now, ito, well, Najimi knows how to, uh, how to break the monotony. It, is, it was getting monotonous. Bumili sila ng mga water gun. So, para makasali si Komi sa, sa fun, kasi it's, uh, I think the water park is already closing. Bumili sila, ng, bumili sila, nagrenta sila ng mga water gun. Sila ni Agari. Si Agari, binigay niya kay Komi yung parang, yung malaki, pinakamalaking narenta nila yung basuka. <laughs> Alright, so everybody started shooting. And, uh, at the end of the day, ayun, sinabi na ni Komi kay, uh, kay Tadano that I had lots of fun. Uh, the third and final stories were about Komi going to the library. Pero, let's break this down ARD style, okay? Pace. Typical slice of life pacing. I don't want to say it's um it's ordinary pero kasi pag sinabing slice of life um you get to uh, you get to learn life lessons from it the pacing of this episode made me learn life lessons kasi there's a certain slowness to a slice of life anime na tipong may konting comic moments pero uh well quick comic moments actually so quick na magigets mo. 
Pero, hindi siya nawawala sa pacing. Excuse me. So, the pacing will make you realize one of these things. Komi is starting to go out on her own. Dahil yung, yung socialization skills na nakuha niya, siguro from, uh, from, their, uh, from their stint at the water park, uh, I think it, yeah, it probably motivated her to go, out, to go out on her own. Of course, to the library. Excuse me again. Although na, well, um, yung father niya insistent na samahan siya, it's okay. I say, well, that's just his, uh, he's just being a father to her. Komi is starting to have her own adventures. She's seeking out um, ways to explore the world on her own. I think it's, yeah, the first time was in, uh, in the salon. Now, it's the second time. Uh, she went to the library. It's still an adventure, folks. For someone who has a communication disorder, it's a huge, ad it's a huge adventure. The pacing will, will make you realize how, uh, how big this is to Komi. Flow naman! Since these are actually two two-part stories, the biggest gear shift in the in the first two stories was yung um, when Tadano told Komi that um, that she should not uh, think the way she thought here na uh, oh I trip I made everyone worry and that makes me feel bad. Tadano was right there saying to her, "You don't have to think that. You don't have." to um, have that kind of mindset right now. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. It just goes to show you how um, how friendly Komi is. Kumbaga, uh, iniisip din niya yung, yung iisipin ng iba. But Tadona is right there to tell her that, um, hey, you don't have to think about that. Hey? We're having fun out here. All of us are having fun. Kaya, yung pag, uh, yung pagkakasugat mong yan, no, that's, we're, accidents happen. We've, we've gone through that. Siguro, ganun, siguro, ganun lang gusto, niya, gusto rin niya sabihin kay Komi. It's okay. It's just, it's nothing serious. The biggest gear shift for the last two stories is, what? Oh, um, Komi and her father uh, sharing uh, well, sharing a father-daughter moment in that uh, in that shaved ice shop. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. We now have an idea of what well, communication disorder or not may pinagmanahan si Komi. <laughs> now, I don't know if uh, it's not clear in this scene kung uh, kung ang tatay niya ay meron ding ganitong klaseng communication disorder but he was able to to speak his mind out so 50-50 I open in gear shift to tell you the truth so these two gear shifts that I saw hmm both will play a role down the line in the second half of this anime's run and it's, ep it's episode 7 already, mga kalaista, Patreon. So we're now in the second half of the run. Komi is just 12 episodes. Yeah. More slice of life matters. <laughs> Plot lies. Plotado. I like the way they transition from the second to the third story. If you're going to um, see it as four stories, pero the way I see it, Dalawang two-part stories to. Importante sa isang uh, multi-story episode na mag-transition ng mabuti. A smooth transition will um, will end up becoming a nearly flawless episode. If you have this well ironed out a plot, new anime fans would uh, totally mistake it as one story. Kasi, Sa transitioning between the second and third stories, 
med ano eh halatang may tawag dito what you call this may unity you can easily assume that um, the events of the third and fourth stories happened a day after the the first and second stories you can safely assume that kasi Komi has already built uh, enough uh, courage to to at least go to the library on her own. At least, uh, well, uh, I'm not saying na masama yung ginawa ng ano ng tatay niya. No, nope. <laughs> don't 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 think of it that way, mga ka lifestyle. It is a father's duty to protect his daughter. Kaya uh, put that aside muna. Komi is on the right track of um, the on on properly dealing with her communication disorder. Kasi may momentum ni. So, lumalabas na siya ng sarili niya. And, good thing Tadano saw it all. So, ikaya siguro, ay, salamat. Nagkakabunga na ang efforts namin na uh, na tulungan si Komi sa kanyang problema. That's why he said there, I saw something nice. That is probably what he meant. So, base, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Komi Can Communicate, episode 7. Isip, isip pa. Ganda nga eh. Oh. I can always sit back when it comes to Komi Can Communicate. Dahil, um... For six episodes, seven episodes straight, it's on pace now to becoming one of Fall 2021's best animes. I tell you, mga lifestyle. Kaya, ganito ang forma ko ngayon eh. I can now um, be confident enough to tell you that, well, you can start recommending this anime to your friends, to your relatives, to your co-workers who love anime just as much as you. Okay. Kasi, ang daming ano eh. Ang daming... Uh, ang daming life lessons na matututunan din eh. And, it also raises awareness to this kind of... Dis- to this kind of... Uh, mental disorder. Na, oh. Kahit ano pang... Uh, ganda ang isang tao sigurado may, tin- may, may tinatago problema to hindi porkit uh, tahimik is na vera you got to know you got to get to the bottom of it before uh, before before judging her as uh, uy o ganda yan, pero nangiisnab eh no bad attitude this anime will teach you how to uh, on how to deal with that. Uh, I'm telling you. Kaya, another great episode. So again, Comic Can Communicate, episode 7. Oh, God. Okay. Hmm. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, Mata Lifestyle. Okay. Call me, call me, call me. Excuse me. So what do we do now, guys? We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. Now, if you're on Patreon, of course, wait for my next upload. But if you're exclusive to the ARD, well, magtis kayo. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Continuation. Nagkakamabuti na na loob sila. Uh, Yo and Anna. Yo is trying to get to Anna um, personality-wise. And well, in the process, he gets slapped like shit again. <laughs> to close it off, sabi ni Yo, maybe you'd like to go to uh, to the temple with me this New Year's Eve. Hindi ako matutulog. Well, something to this effect, sinabi niya ito. Hindi ako matutulog this New Year's Eve hihintayin ko ang sagot mo. Well, eventually, pumayag si Ana. So, magkasama sila pumunta sa temple. Uh, they were already close to the temple entrance. Biglang, 
inatake na naman si Ana. So, nag, uh, nagpunta ang lahat ng demons. Then, ayun, nag-ipon-ipon. Naging super laking demon. This is actually the demon that is inside Ana. To the rescue na si Matamone. Matamone had no choice but to use his ultimate oversoul. That is based on the Furyoko, the original how Asakura gave him. Kasi at, at this point, pinagwawagwagan siya ng demonyong to. So, boom! He finally um, bust the demon wide open. But before he could actually make a kill, pinunit ng demonyo ang sarili niyang braso. And inasume na lang ni Matamone that The demon did this just to escape his Furyoko. Oh, ganun nga nangyari. Uh, susugod na rin ulit si Matamune. I think, yeah. Biglang tumakbo na yung demonyo going into Orosesan, yung, yung mismong bundo na uh, kinatitiri, kinatitiri ka ng templo. Uh, Matamune explained the situation to you and says na if the demon reaches the, the heart of the mountain, He will have more than enough souls to feed him. Bad news. <laughs> so, ayun. Ma, uh, nauna lang tumakbo si Yo. Ang, ang dahilan lang niya. I'm going to rescue Anna, ma, Anna myself. You take a rest, Matamone. Then, final scene. Uh, an old man and his grandson suddenly um, stepped out of the crowd to, uh, to assist Yo. Natulungan na pala before ni Yo ito. So, Mo, you want you want to get to the mountain? Sige, tulungan kita. I owe you one anyway. Let's break this down ARD style. Pace! First half of the episode, medyo slow ang pace. Kasi, Yo is really trying to um get to the bottom of Anna's issues. The pacing on the first half of the episode, understandably slow. Kasi, Uh, feeling out face na ng dalawa. Then all of a sudden, oh! Sampalan mood. <laughs> Sampalan blues na naman. Then, well, hindi, hindi tumigil si Yo right there. So, he went at it and uh, in, invited Anna over to um, to come with him to the temple on New Year's Eve. Pandang second half of the episode, the pace picked up. Dahil, um, kasi, may eh, pinakita ng scene doon na mukhang inaatake na mukhang sumasakit na naman ng katawan ni Ana. Well, that means only one thing for Yo and the rest. May, may lalabas na naman masamang demon. <laughs> so, kasi, ang source pala ng, ng demon na to, lahat ng negative emotions na naramdaman at itinago ni Ana. Kaya, I told you guys, the pace picked up During the second half of the episode, when Anna started feeling body pains again. So, I thought, Oh boy, mukhang mapapalaban na namang si Yo. <laughs> mapapalaban na naman. And you would feel rather scared for Yo, kasi compared to um, the Yo of the current timeline, mahina siya rito eh. Mahina siya rito. So, How is he going to face a demon this mean and this powerful kung ito lang ang nalalaman niya? Despite that, he went after that demon. He, 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 wanted, he really wants to rescue Anna. Yeah, you would feel both scared and, uh, and proud of the main protag. Because, uh, remember, this is five years ago, ang timeline na to. The Yo... Back then, isn't as powerful as the Yo now. So, pero kung yung puso niya eh nando na sa pakikipaglaban, it's no wonder he's, uh, he's almost up to par now with how. Nando na siya eh. Malapit na siya dun eh. So, no complaints about the pacing. Talagang maganda ang pagkaka-pace ng episode na to. Flow naman! Um, first gear shift here was when <laughs> I need to say it when Ana slapped Yo again right sa lakas ng sampal niya 
Nahulog yung mga nyebid doon sa bubungan. Talagang pagka ganun, <laughs> sa lakas, okay? Sa lakas ng sampal. So, you, this gearship will make you feel how, um, uh, how painful that slap was. <laughs> well, bottom line, bakit ko tinawag na gearship to? Well, simple. Um, it's through yours, um, Uh, honest sentiments kaya nagka kaya nagre-react ng ganito si Ana. Hindi sanay si Ana sa ganitong uh, what she terms as patronizing. That's not exactly patronizing. It's not praising, it's um it's just yo telling it as it is. No sugar coating or whatever or whatever bullshit. Wala. Talaga siya sabi niya. Um, you know how to read minds, don't you? Uh, medyo, uh, medyo nagulantang ng konti si Ana doon. Sinabi nga ni, ng lola niya, If Yo really wants to beat How and become the Shaman King, Yo needs a powerful partner. Tada! Si Ana. That's what this gearship also will also make you realize. Second gearship was when Yep, no brainer. When Matamune attacked this demon, you can call this a gearship. Also, uh, based also on the reason that um, with Yo seeing Matamune this strong and a guardian spirit having his own oversoul, so yun siguro. Aba, kung ang spirit na ka na ka acquire ng oversoul na sarili niya, pwede rin ako. Bata lang ako, iba. Pero wala nang tuturo sa akin. So, it's um it's an eye-opening gearship also for for the main protag. Dahil it's just the second time in uh in so short a time that he saw the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu at work. Final gearship was you can say the final scene kasi Sa para tulungan niyo ito. It's one of those gearships that will make you deep dive even more. Dahil, ah, okay. So, now I remember kung saan niya natulungan ang matandang to. Ito yung matandang may-ari ng souvenir shop. Hmm, tanda ko na. Yo, did save this old man's life nung umatake ng, yung umatake yung demon na yun. So, what? Good things come in small packages. Ayun. Andong pala sa templo, kasama yung kanyang apo. Nag-alok ng tulong kay Yo. You wanna go? You wanna reach the top of the mountain? O sige, lika. Dadali kita dun. Through helping people? Yup. You can get what you want. Ika nga ni, ano eh. Ika nga ni Zig Ziglar. Let me quote him on this. You can help enough. Ah, uh, de. You can have everything that you want. If you help enough other people get what they want, sorry to that effect. I'm not like I'm. I'm. I'm not fully memorized the famous quote in Zig Ziglar. But the final scene in this episode is a perfect example of that. So these three gear shifts that I saw, well, uh, you can call them retroactive gear shifts, because. They've already played a role in this anime. Plot-wise, Planchado. Bakit? <sighs> There's a sub-backstory again. Alright, but compared to the one in the last episode, hamak na mas maikli ito. Kumbaga, um, in-explain lang dito kung uh, kung paano nagsimula yung Uh, what you call this? Yung shamanic training ni Matamune. Parang ina na lang yun eh. Parang pinakita lang kung paano nagsimula. Yeah. Siguro at that point, uh, he was already being trained as a shaman by uh, by by how. And now it was in in this episode, it served him really well kasi nagamit yung ultra senji reaction surito with this with this powerful a demon and it, 
and he was almost close to taking its head off. Now, if the plot weren't this uh, ironed out, hindi natin maintindihan eh. Because, um, eto nga, nagkaroon nga ng, uh, one, five to, yeah, five to six second backstory na, well, you can actually set this one aside because it's totally irrelevant to to what was happening in the final in uh, at that moment. It's a quick five to six seconds, then it's done. Back to the main continuity. It's a well ironed out plot. Yeah, no complaints when it comes to the plot of this one. So pace, flow, and plot—they all came together for this episode. So. Shaman King 2021 episode 32 Two thumbs up. I forgot to cinch this on <laughs> But anyway Excuse me We'll just have to wait for the next episode Hopefully it ends Kasi <clears throat> Mukhang Mag isa nang susuguri ni, ni Yo Ang demon na to para lang Ma-rescue niya si Ana so, let's just hope for the best for the main pro tag. And I hope something cool happens in that episode. Don't you think? So again, Shaman King 2021, episode 32. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Yeah. Kalina sa jiriya kaya tsono. So, what are we waiting for? Let's do the drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, well, if you're uh, if you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload. But otherwise, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. So, carry over from the last episode. Nakaron na pagsabog sa Grand Tower. Ang namatay lang pala doon, itong si... Si, uh... Oh, she's known as Girl A by the press. Yung serial killer. Well, nadamay lang siya sa explosion. So, buhay pala si, uh... Si Nana to. Hindi siya talaga mamamatay. Kasi, yung sinuot niyang... Costume, blast suit pala yun. Blast proof. After, um... Taking a, taking a breath, taking a breather, so, hanap, hinarap na nila si ano, Metropoliman. Si Mirai naman, may na, nakaporma na with a, with a red arrow, ready to, ready to shoot at a moment's notice. So, ang, um, uh, well, according to his handler, si Mesa, si Nase ay isang, well, special rank agent na katulad niya. So, well, Bottom line, he fell for Nanato's trap. So, he started aiming at uh, Nanato. Then, oh, siguro hindi makati si Mirai. Eh, papatayin yung kaibigan niya. He shoots the red arrow at that white arrow. Then, uy! Nag Nagtalbugan! Metropoliman was surprised at what happened. Now, he goes after Mirai with that same white arrow. Siya naman ang, sinut siya naman ang tinirahan ng white arrow ni Metropoliman. But, um, uh, I don't know, kasi out of instinct, pinansalag niya yung red arrow niya. Probably out of pure rage, sinugod na siya ni Mirai. And the fight is on. Talagang back and forth, back and forth, left, left, right, up, down. They were all over the place. The, they were going so fast. Uh, only God candidates and angels could actually see the battle. Bigla, bigla, pa, pumorma si Nana to sa likod ni Metropoliman, he starts shooting the head. So, ayun na, susugunan ni Nino, but, at, when he's already in point-blank range from Metropoliman's chest, nakita niya yung mukha ni Metropoliman. So, ano na, kumbaga, nawasak na yung helmet ni Metropoliman sa, tindi, sa tindi ng laban nila. So, he was able to see his face. At that moment, well, Kanade Uryu flew out of there. It is the first time na 
talagang napatras si Metropoliman. He was this close. Eh? He was this close to losing to Mirai. Mirai and Nanato eventually fled the scene back to their headquarters. So, nag, ano sila, nag-usap-usap. Uh, Mirai is again having this moral dilemma, this, uh, uh, what you call this, this self-pity face. He, he, he always has every time there's a situation like this. Eh, sabi na lang ni Nanato, sige, We'll, we'll, we'll take this up again tomorrow. Kasi, tinatanong na nga rin ni, ni Nana to kung ano ang itsura ni Metropoliman sa ilalim ng helmet na yun. Well, eh, sinabi naman ni Saki, mukhang hindi ka, mukhang hindi ka pa masasagot ni Mirai. He, he's, he's too confused right now. And Rebel agrees. Final scene. Well, uh, they went back to their daily high school lives, si Saki. at saka si um, si Mirai pero sinundan ni Mirai si Saki eh tinatunong ng barkada ni Saki na kung, kung nagde-date na sila and well Saki said that she's not dating Mirai she also said I can't fall for him I don't know if Mirai heard that. <laughs> Let's just break this down ARD style para medyo ma medyo ma-enlighten tayo as to what happened in that final scene. Okay, let me let me make forma. Pace. First two thirds of the episode, it was tense. It was heart stopping. Yeah, in in Rebel's own words. Lalo na yung fight scene nila Mirai at, uh, at Kanade. You would actually cheer Mirai for this kasi he has finally had the balls to 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 go up against Metropoliman one to one. As in malapitan, up close and personal. Hindi niya tinira yung arrow na yun. Instead, he used it like a sword. If you've seen the episode, he sent Metropoliman reeling. Napasagang pa nga ng helmet yung mukong eh. So, the pacing will make you feel this. Dagang, I, I, I was at the, I, I was, uh, I was at the edge of my, I was at the edge of my bed when I was watching this. Okay? I was at the edge of my bed when I was watching this. Dagang, uy, 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 gumang ganun na ako eh. It's, Probably, well, it's so far the most action-packed episode of this anime. Aragang, wow, the pacing will make you feel the the um the frustration, the anger, the sadness Mirai is uh, was feeling at those moment at that moment. That's why through the pacing we now know that Mirai can. Go toe to toe with Metropoliman. Ang problema lang sa kanya, his moral compass is too tightly wound. Flow naman. First gear shift here was obviously Nanato standing up after getting, after almost getting blasted to smith the rings with Metropoliman's bomb. So, bago din ako na gear shift. What? Can you. Can you call the um the continue the, the opening scene a gear shift? I don't think so. Must gear shift ito. Dahil it um it confirms that well Nanoto is still alive. It's quite a um a scary gear shift kasi medyo medyo susuray suray pa from from the blast scene na Nanoto pero pinili pa rin tumayo because they still got business to take care of. Metropolitan is still up there. It also gave probably confidence to Mirai to uh, in pulling off this uh, pulling off this uh, this mission of theirs. Second gear ship was when Mirai um, blocked 
Metropolitan's White Arrow with his Red Arrow. Kasi tinira na niya kay Nana to. So, why did I call this a gear shift? Here's why. We now know uh, the other use of these arrows. So, they can't destroy each other. So, they can, but they can block one another. Nakita natin lahat kung if you've seen the episode. We now know, uh, yeah, the, this other use of the arrows. They can also serve as shields. They can also serve as daggers or swords. Close combat, ayun. Pinatunayan ni, ni, ni Mirai that a red arrow can also be used for close combat. Discovery gear ship? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Final gear ship was when, well, basically, Mirai saw Metropolitan's actual face. Why did I call it a gear ship? Kasi, namukha na siya ni Mirai. But, basically, namukha na siya ng, 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 ng isa pang God candidate. Bottom line, Kanade needs to needs to exercise more discretion in what in what Metropolitan does after this. If you don't call this a gear shift, I don't know what will. Kasi, it's a breakthrough gear shift. A breakthrough in the anime, so to speak. Dahil, well, I'm sorry, Metropolitan, but another god, another god candidate has seen your face. So, be prepared to wear a bullseye behind your back next time. <laughs> so, these three gear shifts that I saw, um, all of them will play a role down the line in this anime. Plot-wise, Malinis. Bakit? Well, Leiden Films would be an idiot if they cinch in a side story or a backstory in this episode. Kapag naglagay sila ng ganon, sira ang momentum. Because, maganda yung build up eh, from the opening scene up to uh, the point where the, where, the, where the fight started. People might lose the interest already in the fight scene. Kaya, Tama tama lang yung linis ng plot ng episode na to. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Platinum End, episode 7. Kung mag-isip? Hmm. So, thumbs up agad. Excuse me. Ganda talaga ng fight scene yun. Grabe. Talagang ang nag-understand nyo eh. Nagwala si Mirai dun. And Metropolitan just couldn't um, get his bearings straight because of this um, because of this um, this violent fit Mirai had. So we can now say that um, close combat is Metropolitan's weakness. Kasi hindi niya talaga yung inspector eh. Hmm? Pwede. All he does is shoot. But, take the fight to him up close and personal. He's dog shit. Alata rito eh. Uh, all he did was block. All he did was block all, um, uh, all Mirai shots. Talagang. <laughs> Na-expose ang weakness ni Metropolitan sa episode na to. You can call it a breakthrough in this anime because, well, if I were Naruto, I would, um, I would have Mirai capitalize on this. It's, it's now a case of either you or him amongst the god candidates. Darunanat, si Metropolitan. So, come on, come on, Mirai. Drop that moral compass of yours for a while and start taking the fight to Metropolitan. Well, like you, like what you just did in this episode. I would love to see these two go at it again. But, uh, with a more deliberate Mirai. A more, um, battle-ready Mirai. And I'm hoping that Nanato can do something about that. Say, well, like he knows a thing or two about fighting. So again, Platinum End Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Ang galing ng fight scene. Ooh. 
So what do we do now? Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle? What? Of course, we do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode of this anime. Well, I, I really can't wait the aftermath. I really cannot wait the aftermath of this. So, until then, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And mga ka uh, if you're if you're still uh, uh, well, if you're still with the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Before we um, actually um, do the review, may I announce ako, Patreon, mga lifestyle. Uh, Yasuhime the second act has been announced that it's going to be a split core series. So, kumbaga, first 12 episodes na yung fall, then it's going to take a break uh, in the following anime season. Kaya ang balik na ng Yasuhime is spring 2022. So, let's run this down. We pick up where we left off in the last episode kasi nag, uh, nagkanya-kanyang racket na nga, di ba, ang, ang tatlong bida. But Toa is left to uh, to go along with uh, Rion and Riku. Dahil uh, she needs to track Zero down. Dahil well, binalita sa kanya ni Rion na uh, bala siyang patayin ng babaeng ito. Sumama na si Toa. So it's now uh, hers and Riku's job to to protect Rion from, of course, none other than Kirin Maru, her father. And si Setsu na naman, sumama kila Kohaku in this, uh, in this well-to-do village to protect them from uh, from the local deity, si Mayunaka. Nag, nagpakawala kasi ito ng mga flame bulls to, to disrupt their livelihoods, basically. Ruin their lives. Si Moroha naman, uh, carry... Actually, carry over din yung story niya eh. Tutu- tinutulungan niya kasi si Takechi yun na makabalik sa pwesto. Eh, nahuli siya. Eventually, nakataka siya. And, alam na kung bakit, uh, well, she now completely understands the backstory behind uh, the political struggle this clan has right now. Bottom line, Moroha is now there to carry on the sins of her parents. <laughs> Okay, so I don't envy her. I don't envy Moro's position right now. So, ito naman si Setsu na they're making. Uh, she and the, the other demon slayers are now planning on how to um, on how to fully control these flame bulls. And while this is going on, Kirin Maru, all right, Kirin Maru himself, uh, meets up with. Toa, Riku, and Rion. Oh, por ba na si Toa using the Sun Seeken? Ah, teka, sabi ni Kirin Maru. Oh, you have the Sun Seeken? Sige, halika. <laughs> Maglaban tayo. <laughs> Toa is never known to back down from a fight. Y- yun ang problema niya. Eh, biglang may yung... Yung multo ng batang nakita niya in the opening scene, nakita niya uli. Just running around like that. It, it even played with Toa's bicycle. Ginag, iniikot yung pedal na ganun. Eh, nagtaka rin si Kirin Maru. Ano nakit? Ano nakit ito? So, nagkasuspensya na si Kirin Maru that Toa is able to see the spirit known as Aroku. Ah, si, si, Akur, si Akuru. It is a spirit that only appears itself to, well, basically, Sesumaru's bloodline. Ni-reveal ni Kirin Maru rito yan. And, eh, tinanong nga niya kay Toa, does the spirit you're seeing uh, holds a pinwheel? Oh, sinabi ni Toa, oh, bago magsumalaman. Ayun, sinabi, sinabi niya na the ability to see Akuru, Akuru pala, Akuru. The ability to see Akuru 
It's an ability exclusive to the Sumerus clan. So, what? What? Uh, probably while this was going on, nagpakita ni si Akuru kay Setsuna. Before they entered the um, the village they're supposed to help. The, the village they're supposed to help. Nakipaglaro pa nga kay Setsuna. So talagang, ano. And, itong si Akuru, ngumiti pa kay Towa. So, eh, smile back naman si Towa. So, then, on his very way. Final scene. Ang final scene dito, yung sagupaan between Moroha and the, and the, and the full moon raccoon, raccoon dog. And, ito talaga ang hinihintay ni Moroha na makasagupa niya. She went Bernia siya. Ginamit yung rouge niya. But, I don't know what happened kasi, may ginawa ang matandang kumukontrol sa full moon raccoon dog na parang na kinagunan ni, ni, ni Moro ha. I don't know what is kasi yun lang, yun lang naging final scene. It's, the final scene is a puzzle. Okay? It left me puzzled. But don't get me wrong, mga kalay sa. So let's break this down, ARD style. Pace. If you can, uh, if you see this episode as thoroughly as I am, malala, you can easily pass it off as three stories in one episode. Kumbaga, hin hindi naman niya kinonsentrate sa isang storya for the first, probably the first third of the episode, another third to, ngayari, uh, first third kay Toa, first third kay Setsu, uh, second third kay Setsuna, um, last third kay Moroha. No. Kumbaga, the pacing will make you understand that all of these stories are happening at the same time. Kaya, from one scene, Ketowa, pupunta ka kagad sa situation ni Setsuna. Then, pupunta naman sa eksena ni Moroha. Which, well, for me, it's, for me, it's really good. Right? For me, it's really good. Kasi, uh, this isn't a slice of life anime. We're in, like, Komi can communicate. We're in four different stories. No. This is a fantasy action series. Kaya, e tapos may uh, tatlong magkakaibang gulo ang silangkutan ng mga bida. So, um, I couldn't find any way to 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 make the pace even better. Talagang, this, this is really good. The pace was really good for this episode. I got no complaints. Uh, flow naman. I couldn't discern which scene here is a gear shift. Kasi, every scene was a gear shift actually. Pero, the one I would really cite the most is the final scene. Because, um, it really left me puzzled as to why Moroha um, is in, has that, um, has that look of uh, disbelief on her face, eh, gumamit siya ng Crimson Backlash Wave, eh. That's her most powerful move right now. Lalong-lalo na kung nakabeniyasa siya. What made her... What made her confused like that? That's why I got it the gearship, folks. Kasi, eh, it made me think. Okay? It made me deep dive. Just now. It made me deep dive. Okay? It made me deep dive. With the with the final scene as the biggest gear shift of this episode, I truly believe that these three stories will come to will all come to a head in probably in the next two or three episodes. Yung mga uh, nangyari dito will play a role down the line during those uh, the next two to three episodes. Sabi ko sa inyo eh. Every scene here is a gear shift. Pero, uh, the one that led them was the final scene. Plot-wise, Planchado. You know, if there's anything that uh, Sunrise is, uh, is probably good at doing is this. 
well ironed out plots because they've been doing this to Gundam they also did this to Inuyasha so yung kumbaga eh, well you couldn't say these are back stories or side stories because these three stories are happening at the same time so you really need to iron out the plot really well kaya dapat detalyado ang ang pagpa-plot ng episode na to and yeah, they did exactly that talagang hats off to to sunrise for um for the for the second straight episode ganito ang format kumbaga uh, kanya-kanyang storya muna sila towa setso na at moroha kasi naghiwalay naghiwalay muna sila ng landas but uh, but not the bad boy okay this, don't worry any asha fans hindi nag uh, hindi nag gerapatani ang tatlong ang tatlong mga paboritong waifus natin all right so don't worry they just decided to um to develop their individual to develop their individual characters on their own that's the, what the plot will make you realize it, because it's a well ironed out one you won't lose track i assure you you will not lose track within the episode and the way i see it it'll all come to a head probably well, at the very least four episodes from now yeah conservative uh, estimate ko yan. so pace flow and plot they all came together for this episode that giving us another um uh yeah giving us a very balanced episode well it's an inuyasha spin-off what do you expect <laughs> so yasha Himi the second act episode eight Oh, two thumbs up. Ano pa yung bagay na ikinagulat ni Moro ha? Right after unleashing her crimson backlash wave. Hmm. Ano ba meron dun? Tino, comment below. Right? Uh, I can't. I can't think on my own too much. Baka, baka sa mental yun na ako pulute dito. So. Another thing, si Aroku, bakit Aroku ba ako, Akuro? But anyway, it's the boy spirit that only uh, people of Sashumaru's bloodline can see. But, ayun nga, like I said a while ago, in, uh, in this generation, yung Kampal, Towa, and Setsuna, they both saw uh, Aruku. Probably at the same time. Well, spirits can do that. <laughs> spirits can do that even in real life. So, what? Ano what? Ano what? 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 Yung What? 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 Hindi na ganun yung pedal. Kasi parang wala. Nakurious kasi. It's it's totally out of this era. So, ganun, ganun na siya ng ganun. Ganun na siya ng ganun. Tapos biglang humanap ito ha. Umiti. Eh, ito naman si Towa. I smile back naman. So, yeah, well, ano ko went, went his merry way and hindi na siya nagpakita. Much to the um, uh, well, talaga nagtasit kirin maru. Ano so guys, siguro. Mabiglang, biglang nag ibla, biglang nag ibang tipla ng batang ito. But, may nakita ba nung, may nakita ba yung spirit ito? <laughs> so, uh, you can say it's a rather funny moment at that point. Yung, that, um, uh, those three seconds were in, biglang, nakita ni Towa si Aro kung nagtatatakbo sa harapan niya. Then, uh, nagtaka na lang si Kirimaro kung bakit bakit bigla nag-ibaihip ng hangin ng, ng kalaban niya. So, ayun, na, na-discern ka agad ni Kirimaro that 
towa just so aroku. The spirit he is really trying to get, or is really trying to capture. Kasi, I think, more likely, Aroko is connected to the windmill of time. I think he needs Aroko to control the windmill of time. So, kasi mar marami siyang binagit ako sa windmill of time here. Eh. Si Kirin Maru. Even Rion. Sinabi nga ni Rion, the windmill of time is no longer in your favor. Pero, well, hindi na kinig ang tatay. He really wants to, to take control of that device. Para, yeah. Why, why conquer the airport when you, can, when you can conquer space and time? Pretty diabolical, di ba? So, well, let's just wait for the next episode. So, again, Yashahime, the second act, episode 8. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga lifestyle. Galing, galing. Yung three, three story pa nga. So what do we do now? E di yung drill. We wait for next week and watch that episode. If you're on Patreon, wait for my next upload, but... <laughs> kung, kung YouTube lang ang kaya mo, well, sorry ka na lang, boy. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. A little bit of um last minute requests by uh by, by Colonel Geth yung uh you direct superior ng mga 86 na what gamitin na uh, ang isang imperial prototype na aeroplano in order to um, to quickly transport uh, the entire Nordic squadron in taking out the Morpho. So, request granted. Then, uh, pinakita niya kung ano ang, ano ang prototype airplane na to. It's called the Naxerer. Object si Frederica kasi it, it is an, un, an untried plane. Pero, Ang nag-volunteer pala na na mag-pilot sa aeroplanong ito, it's none other than Colonel Get herself. Kasi, she revealed here that she was one of the test pilots of the Naxerer. Months before the war started. She knows what she's saying. Kaya, well, the entire Nordic Squadron uh, took her word for it. So, again, at the forefront are the 86. And wala well, na ni Shin na uh, uh, Frederica to, threw a temper tantrum. So, kinausap niya na masinsinan si Frederica. And he found out that, well, this is her bottom line. She doesn't want uh, the 86 to go. Kasi, uh, ang reason niya, nawala na nga siya ng 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 older sibling non in Korea and she now has a higher chance now of losing the 86 these five are act she sees all the five 86 as her as, as her older brothers and sisters and she doesn't want to lose any of them but eh sabi ni Shin it's our choice. So we're only uh, we're only concerned for your safety since you are just a mascot here. Basically, yun na sinasabi ni Shin. And eventually, well, Frederica relented much to her disliking. The president of the Jod Federacy, yung si Ernst, yung nag-ampon sa limang 86, kinausap sila and really pleaded with them to to come back alive. So after his after his talk with them, uh, he told himself, "Come back alive, or I'll destroy this world." Ayana, countdown to the mission has started. Then it all went to zero. Mission start. Let's start now on cover fire. Kung are, 
they're they're aiming for for the little ones, yung mga yung mga minions. Kumagat naman. So nag, nag so sugod na ang mga ibang Legion machines to to where the source of the firing is. Ayun. Kumonti na bantay. That's when the Noxeter launched. Doon siya nag-launch. So, so final scene. While they were um, on their way, Shin was already sensing the uh, the enemy. So, kumbaga, well, actually nakita niya sa monitors niya na dumadami na ang mga ang mga uh, Legion na naghihintay sa kanya. And, well, all he did was a, all he did for a response was a smile. Okay? That sick smile of his. I don't know why that smile of his creeps me out. <laughs> so let's break this down ARD style. Uh, really, man, gusto ko talaga paghimay-himayin ang episode na to eh. Pace. For several seconds and when the mission was uh, in its preparatory stages, the pace it picked up. Okay? It is a good mix of fast and slow. Dahil, Siyempre, nag, uh, nagla-last minute na nagla-last minute request si Colonel Get. So, the pace is rather slow. No tense moments. Talagang um, matinong pag-uusap between direct superior and direct uh, subordinate. It was only during um, the scene where, where Shin confronted Frederica for her tantrum and of course, yung nagsimula na ang mission to, to take out the Morpho. Doon lang pumingka pang pace. But, I got no complaints mga ka-lifestyle. Patreon. The pacing was balanced. Good mix of fast and slow. The pacing will make you realize that it is a serious matter we're, uh, we're watching here. Because, technically, it's the final assault of the three, uh, of the three country alliance. You know, we're talking about Jad, Robo Garcia, and Wald. The three... Uh, the three remaining countries that are defiant of the Legion. Uh, flow naman. First gear shift was when Colonel Get showed the Nox Zetter to the entire Nordic squadron. Dahil ko din ang gear shift. What? Does any one of you object? Kasi marami pa lang. Well, this gear shift will tell you first that uh, the old Jad Empire left a lot of secret projects um, lying around. All, uh, they're, lying, they're lying around all over the place actually. Noong nagsimula ang gerang ito, hindi nila na-develop lahat yun. Halos. Second gear shift was of course the, um, uh, the verbal spat between Frederica and Shin. Through this gear shift, Shin is now conscious of what Frederica's actual feelings are for this war. Oh, bottom line, she doesn't want to lose any of them. Especially si Shin, kasi talagang kuya ang talagang tingin na niya ngayon kay Shin. Finally, nag-open up si Frederica. You could say it's character development for Frederica? Yes! Kaya gear shift ito. Final gear shift was um, yeah, the final scene where where Shin flashed that sick smile of his when she when he saw the monitor na nagkukumpul-kumpul na ang Legion mukhang talagang kinihintay silang umatake why did I call this a gear shift? well, simply lang it just goes to show you again how psychotic <laughs> Shin ay nosin is that's why they call him the Reaper sa pagkaangiti niyang yon. Walang, walang, may ibig sabihin yun, imposibleng wala. It's one of the, it's probably one of the plethora of things this gear shift will tell you. Kaya talagang, maraming ibig, maraming actually ang ibig sabihin ng, ng ngiti niyang yun. But for me, it just goes, just goes to show me that Shin is addicted to war. He loves going up against other psychics. And, Kiryan no Sen, presents another challenge to him. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, I 
I am 90% sure that these three gear shifts will play a role down the line in the second half of, of season two. Wow, what a way to uh, what a way to kick off season what a way to kick off the second half of season two. Bloodwise. Malinis. Now is not the time to um to cinch in those side stories, those backstories. Comic moments, puede. The plot was so clean, you would actually um, feel the emotions of Frederica and of course Shin during the final scene when he when he flashed that that psychotic smile of his. <laughs> Even I couldn't smile like that. The plot is so clean; it'll make you it'll make you. Um, Feel probably the same emotions Shin and Frederica uh, showed in this episode, or even the um, even Colonel Geff, yung sentiments niya towards the um, towards the eighty six. So pace, flow, and plot. Um, I almost didn't distinguish the pacing from the flow. Bakit? Kasi Almost every scene here is a gear shift. And pero the pacing will uh the pacing somehow mask it as as such. You really have to uh watch the episode real carefully to discern the gear shifts. Yeah, well it wouldn't happen if it weren't for a clean plot. Kaya, ganun kalinis talaga. Talaga pinahirapan ako ng plot ng episode na to. So, 86 part 2, episode 7. Isip-isip. Ba't nga lang episode eh? Mm. Two thumbs up! I'm telling you mga ka-lifestyle, if there's anybody in your inner circle who still, who, who is still deliberately missing out on 86, You better convince them for the last time, because um, convincing them after episode seven might be too late for them now. Cause I I got this strong feeling right now that we're going to uh, we're going to see the end of this anime earlier than the finale. You know what I'm talking about. So. If I were you, mga ka lifestyle Patreon, if you know anybody who is actively, well, actively, yeah, missing out on this anime, you better tell them to start watching it now. Don't do catch up mode now. Just watch the first six episodes, then this. Because, well, for me, 86 doesn't deserve to be underrated. And I'm sure. Every anime critic out there will agree with me when I say that 86 is one of the best animes the, at least this year, if not in recent memory. As I said, you missed out on 86. You probably missed out on the last three years of uh, uh, the last three the last three years worth of anime. It's that good. It's that good. So again, 86 part 2, episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Bakbaka na. Well, so what do we do now? We do the drill. We wait for next week and watch the next episode. I really can't wait on how, uh, on, how ev on how everything is going to go down. On how the more the morpho is going to be taken down. Tsaka, ano eh, um, I really want to know, if ever, the, the reason behind that smile by Shin. While we wait for that, Patreon, wait, well, hintayin nyo na lang yung susunod kong upload. And if you're still exclusive to the ARD, mga ka-lifestyle, well, I can't help you. But, 
enjoy the reviews on this digest. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of it. Um, basically, the gang decided to go to this um this we can say artificial resort. Lahat na posibing facilities in our real life resort ay nandito. Merong nakilala si Sakura rito na, well, hindi man exactly, hindi talaga nagpakilala, pero uh, you can tell by, from the poster na, na tinuturo niya, na isa siya dun sa mga, sa mga nasa poster na yon na idol. She misinterpreted um, Sakura's courtesy as uh, yan, uh, you, you blew me off, bastos ka pa. Ganun ang, uh, that's how, that's that's what she's accusing Sakura of. So, uh, sa galit niya, she walks away and sinabi na ni Sakura, what's her problem? <laughs> so, uh, they were having fun and of course, Tero to is uh, having a very relaxing moment, probably a first, probably his first time ever to relax. <laughs> nag, uh, nag crave ng refreshment si Sakura. They're offering this limited edition juice in one of the stands. So, punta rin siya. But, um, nagkataon na papunta rin doon yung si, yung idol girl na nakaaway niya. Sabay sila nag-order ng, ng limited edition juice. By the way, uh, the idol girl's name is Pear Me. Ang problema nga lang, iisa na lang yung Ah, uh, yung, yung, yung juice na to. So, uh, ba'y tinanong ni Permi, ano ba, what do you wanna do? Hmm. Eh, ang sabi lang ni Sakura, the only way I know how. Nilabas niya yung build divide card niya. So, the battle was on. But while, while this battle was going on, Permi was blurting out all all our frustrations all her um, resentments, all her uh, anger, uh, that, well, due to, well, it's, it's obvious, it's due to the toxicity that comes to being, uh, comes with being uh, in the idol business. Eh, ang point lang ni Sakura, why do you have to vent all your frustrations out on me? <laughs> Eventually, Sakura beats Permi in this battle. After after she lost in this battle, Permi realized that and that she was wrong. She was wrong. And well, nagsorry naman siya kay Sakura and uh, she even pleaded to Sakura to to not get mad at her. Final scene. May nakakita sa kanya si Kitero to. It's um a female staff member of the Ocean. At Mukhang kilala si Tero to. So, that's where the episode ended. To be continued nga eh. Himay-himayin natin ngayon ito, AR Dista. Right? Pace. Overall, the pacing of the episode was moderate. Well, the battle scene was pretty fast kasi siguro uh, Lion Films wanted to show us that um, this battle is uh, has no value. All forms of toxicity, basically. And it's probably so toxic that, well, the stats and the details of this battle were never divulged. If the, um, if the battle scene was in full detail, malamang, bibilis ang pacing ng episode na to. But, uh, the pacing was moderate. Talagang na focus uh, na focus ito sa rest and relaxation day ng tatlo. And here's a factoid. This is Sakura's first battle since the pilot. Napansin niyo ba? <laughs> Kaya wa, well, okay lang 'yung pacing. Although yun again, yun nga lang ang reklamo ko rito. They should have um put more details into the battle scene. First gear shift here was uh, the fated meeting between Permi and Sakura. Why did I call this a gear shift? Although late, 
This scene probably triggered the episode. Another thing this gearship will tell you is this. If you have a following, offline or online, you have to keep yourself in check. Yung demeanor na to ni Permi, well, pinatotohanan lang niya ang mga sinasabi sa kanya ng kanya mga detractors. Well, in, fair, in fairness to Sakura, she turned Permi down gracefully. Right? Eh, class na babae naman si Sakura, so she knows how to uh, conduct herself uh, in front of people. Eh, Permi took offense. Kaya, that's why I called it a gearship. This is the gear shift that actually triggered the entire triggered the rest of the episode. Second gear shift. Hmm. Alam nyo, this story, this this episode doesn't actually involve Teruto. Talagang you can see it's an all Sakura episode because of this gear shift. Nung nakita sila uli ni Permi for that limited edition juice. Kasi nag-iisa na lang in stock. Eh, eh sinasabi pa nga sa kanya ni Permi. Go order something else. Sabi, sabi naman ni Sakura. Ba't ba ako mag-order ng iba? Eh, gusto ko ito. <laughs> Pakilam mo. <laughs> it ain't a card gaming anime without a scene like the scene that followed this gear shift. Well, this gear shift triggered the battle scene. Bottom line. Third and final gear shift was when Permi confronted he uh, confronted her hater. So with a nung nag ano na sila yung tat, silang tatlo mga idols na nag nag meet nag sabay sabay nag meet and greet sa mga fans. The hater suddenly threw her a beach ball. Uh, talagang as in rude yung with rudeness ano ah with rudeness mixed into it talagang binato siya ng beach ball ng ganun. Tapos, bigla sumigaw. Oy! May sa stage na yan! Di ka bakit mag-idol! Masyado kang istabela! Ganun, ganun ang... Ganun ang... Binubunga nga nun eh. But... Um, sinabi ni Permi to the fans, Nope! Don't do anything to him. Ako nalapit dyan. O, lumapit nga. All she did was... Um, take out the guy's hand and sabi niya, Even though you hate me, I still love you. Something to that effect. At that moment... Lalo dumami ang fans ni Permi. This is one of the very few gearships that you can say na uh, character development gearships that does not involve any of the lead characters. Isang supporting character lang. Pero, it's profound enough to, uh, to give us a moral lesson. To give us a life lesson. Fame is not just a, um, a right. It's also a responsibility. So these three gear shifts that I saw, they all came together for this episode. Excuse me. Plotwise, malinis for a um part for something for an episode that uh that mainly features Sakura and a possible supporting character for them. Malinis ang plot because if you want to impart a life lesson to the audience, you do not need uh, well putting out an ironing out a plot. It's out of the question. You need it to be as clean as possible. Kung dadagdagan mo na well, there are flashback sequences in this episode. Pero ang iikli. You can easily ignore it. So yeah, no complaints about the no, no complaints about the plot. It's a really clean one. Uh, well, like I said a while ago, you need a really clean plot to impart a life lesson to the audience. Kailangan, kailangan clear sa utak nila. Hmm? So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. So. Build Divide Cold Black Episode 7 Deserve Two thumbs up Here's another reason why I gave it the two thumbs up Well, it's because of the life lesson 
we we picked up from this uh, from this particular episode. Because, well, if you're a fan uh, of an idol girl, you need to be responsible as well. Because, hindi mo alam ang ang full backstory ng iniidolo mo. So, pag medyo sumablay sa performance, medyo nag nagpakita ng attitude problem, first instance, patawarin mo na lang. You don't know the whole story. Well, uh, as my as my uh, as my personal development mentor would say, You do not know the whole story. Do not judge the first time. If you're an idol or a celebrity, kailangan, uh, you really have to conduct yourself as professionally as you can. Uh, well, people do not give a shit about what you're going through. Probably your fans lang. But generally, people do not give a shit about Uh, what you went through, uh, how toxic the environment is in the idol business, they don't need to hear this. So, the best thing you should do is just perform. Make them happy. At baka sakali, maiintindihan nila. Ganun na lang. Tama ba ako, mga ka-lifestyle? Tama ba ako? So again, Build Divide Cold Black, Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Great life lesson line the film's getting. So what do we do now? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch the continuation of this episode. Kasi to be continued nga eh. Kaya, whoa. Ba eh. Abang-abangers na lang kung sa maliligaw si Tero to. So in the meantime, Patreon, wait for my next upload and... For you mga ka-lifestyle, sorry na lang kasi wala kayo sa Patreon eh. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest instead. <laughs>